In this video, we will discuss the problem replace every element with least greater element on its right. So the problem says that we'll be given an array which will consist of n integers and we have to replace every element with the least greater element on its right side in the array. If no greater element exists for that particular element on the right side, then we will simply return minus one for that particular place. So let's quickly check out the sample example. Suppose we have been given this particular sample example. So if we'll consider the second sample example that has been given. So in this particular example, we can see that we have been given the array ARR as two, then six, then we have been given nine, then we have been given one, and we have been given three, then we have been given two. So we can simply observe that if we look, uh, if we look for two, so what is the smaller element? Uh, what is the least element that is greater than two? So I can say that three. So I will write three here, right? Then if I look for six, so for towards the right side for six, which is the element that is uh, least and it is greater than six. So we can simply say that that element is nine. Then if I look for nine, then we can say that there is no element uh, towards the right side of nine that is greater than uh, just uh, greater than nine. So I can write minus one for one. What is the element that is uh, just greater? So three is also greater. Two is also greater. But we can simply say that the element that is greater for one is nothing but two because uh, we are finding the least greater element, right? After this, for three, we can say that the answer will be minus one because there is no greater element towards the right side. And for two also, the answer would be nothing but minus one, right? The answer array would be three, nine, minus one, two, minus one, and minus one, right? That is what we can see here. Three, nine, minus one, two, minus one, and minus one. Now, how can we do this particular problem? So for doing this particular problem in uh, both the languages, that in that is in C++ and Java, we can use a data structure that is known as the set data structure, right? We can use set data structure in C++ and we can use a preset data structure in Java, right? So what we can do here is, first of all, we can simply declare a set, like we can have a set and you know that in set we have only unique elements, right? So what we can do is, we can start iterating the array from the back, right, from here. And what we will do is, first of all, we'll insert this particular element into the array. So we'll insert two into the array, right, uh, into the set. So we'll insert the current element that is two into the set. After inserting two into, into the set, what we'll do is we'll perform an upper bound function, right? We'll write an upper bound function on the set for the current element RFI. Now, what does this mean? When we apply the upper bound function in this particular set, so upper bound function will give the if we are passing this particular element, that is, we are if we are passing the current element uh, in this upper bound function. Uh, so, what will uh, this particular function do? So, the, this upper bound function will give the least element, right? The least element, right? Will return if inside the set it will check and it will return the least element that is greater than. It will return the least element that is greater than the given element array of i. Okay, and that is what we want. So what we will basically uh, get here is if we will check for two, so we can basically say that for two, there is no element that is greater than two, right? So in that case, the set, uh, this upper bound function will return nothing but minus one if there is no such function. And similarly, inside our, uh, inside Java also, we have the tree set. So in that, we can use the higher function, right? There is a function that is named as higher. We will be looking into the code as well. So that will, uh, that will simply return null if there is no element that is just greater than the given element, right? that is passed in the parameters and if there is an element then it will return that particular element right so let's uh, check it in terms of pseudocode so what we'll be doing here is once we have inserted this so what we will do is we'll also declare an answer array and for this particular index we can simply mark the answer as minus one then what we'll do is we'll uh, keep on iterating and now we'll move to three when we move to three so after that what will happen we'll insert three into the set and it will get inserted like this after we have inserted three into the set then we will look for three so for three if we check for the upper bound, the current ith element is three and we check for the upper bound of three. So is there any element that is greater than three here? No. So in that case, what will happen? We'll um, uh, return, like we'll simply write minus one because if we check using the higher function in Java also, so we'll get null. Okay. After this, what will happen? We'll move to this particular element that is one. When we move to one, so we'll insert one into the set, right? We'll simply insert one, the element one into the set. And now we will uh, apply the upper bound function or the higher function in Java. Now it will uh, like now we have passed the parameter inside the parameter we have passed the current element that is one 
Now, which is the element, least element that is greater than 1? So, two elements are greater than 1, that is 2 and 3. But the least element, uh, the upper bound function will return the least element that is greater than 1. So, it will return 2. So, here we can simply store 2, right? After this particular part, what we will be doing is, uh, we will move to the next index. So, then we will move to the index number 9, uh, like in the, the, to the element 9. When we move to the element 9, then we will simply insert the element 9 into the set as well. And now we will apply the upper bound function or the higher function in Java for finding the least element that is greater than 9 in this particular set. So, there is no element, right, because you can see that from here till here, there is no element that is greater than 9. So, that is why it will return minus 1. Uh, like it will return, it will basically point to the end of the array, you can say, right, it will point to the end of the array. It will not return minus 1, but it will point to the end of the array. And when it points to the end of the array, then in that case, what we can simply say here is that we can simply store, or like we can simply store a minus 1 here, right? Okay, because if we apply the upper bound function, right, if we apply the upper bound function, and if the upper bound function uh, for a particular ith element, if it does not find any element that is greater than the, uh, the, the element that we have passed, in that case, it will simply return set dot end in C++, right? And in the... When we apply the higher function in Java, similarly for the particular ith element, then it will return on null, indicating that that particular element does not, uh, like there is no element that is greater than array of i that exists, right? So once this has been done, right, once this part has been done, so what we uh, can simply say is that we'll move to the next index. So when we move to 6, so we'll move to 6 and now we'll insert 6 into the set. So 6 is inserted here and 9 is here, right? After this, uh, we'll apply the upper bound function or the higher function in C++ and Java respectively and now we will simply check the high, uh, just the smallest element that is greater than 6 inside the set. So that element is nothing but 9 so we will write a 9 here right. After this part we will move to the next index so then we will move to 2. When we move to 2 then we can simply say, uh, say that uh, 2 is inserted so when we insert 2 so there is no change because in uh, only unique entries will be allowed. Now for 2 what is uh, when we apply the upper bound function or the higher function what do we get? We get this just uh, greater element, right? So the just greater element is nothing but 3. So we'll get the index of this particular element and we can retrieve it. So that is why we'll get 3 here. And that is how you can see that we have built this particular answer array that is containing for every element array of i, it is containing the least greater element, right? For every index, uh, for every ith index and that corresponding element array of i, uh, we are having in the answer array, we are having the least greater element towards the right. Okay, that is how we have solved it. Now, let's quickly write the code for this approach as well. So, what we'll be doing here is, first of all, we'll declare a set. So, set in test i I'll show you both Java and C++ codes in the end. Right. So, what we'll be doing is, uh, first of all, we'll declare a set. And similarly, we'll also declare a vector int answer. That is uh, because we need to return the answer uh, in terms of a vector. Right. After this part, what we will simply do is, we'll start iterating through the array. So, int uh, i starts from n minus 1. We'll start uh, iterating from the back, as I've already told. Right. Then i is greater equal to 0. Then we'll do an i minus minus. Right. After this part, what we will do is, we'll say that uh, auto iterator. Right. Because uh, the upper bound function will return an iterator. That is the pointer to that particular element. So, we'll check that if the upper bound. Right. We'll check simply that uh, if the upper bound. So, we'll apply the upper bound function on the set. Right. We'll write set dot upper bound if this particular upper bound function right for the particular ith element so before that we'll insert this particular element also inside the set so we'll say that st dot insert array of i right so we'll insert this particular ith element inside the set and then we'll apply the upper bound function and now if it happens that the iterator like if the it returns st dot n right if it's equal equal to st dot n so that will mean that the Next, uh, th that will mean that there is no greater element present towards the right side for the ith element. And in that case, we can say that for the ith element, we simply need to insert what? We simply need to insert minus 1 into the answer. Else, what we can say is, else we can say that the, for the ith element, uh, the iterator must be pointing to that particular uh, least element that is greater than uh, the current element array of i towards the right side. So, we'll simply store it. Right. And once we have done this particular part, so we can simply return the answer here. Now, let's try and compile this code to see if there is any error. Okay, it works on the samples. Let's try and submit this code as well. So you can see that our solution was able to pass all the test cases that were given in this particular problem. We simply, uh, we simply did what? We simply took a set, right? Uh, then we had to return an answer in array list or vector in C++. We iterated from the back. We inserted the ith element into the set and we applied the upper bound function. Uh, in Java, we'll apply the higher function, right? Uh, in the tree set. 
so we'll apply we applied it to get the pointer to the to the least element that is greater than arrow i if there is no such element existing then we inserted minus one for that particular index otherwise in the answer array we inserted that particular element by doing star of itr because itr is pointing to that particular index when we do star itr so we get that particular element right and then we return the ultimate answer now talking about the same uh, approach in java so what we will be doing here is first of all we'll be simply declaring a tree set right so we'll declare a tree set in java uh, of integers then we'll have an array list of answers as well then we'll keep on iterating from the back side and we'll simply insert the ith element into the tree set if uh, we will check uh, if we will check if the set dot higher array if uh, we are simply checking the higher uh, bound uh, like upper bound and that that function is higher in java right that function is named as higher if it's equal to null in that case we can say that there is no element existing towards the right side that is greater than the current element arrow phi so we'll simply uh, insert minus one for that particular place otherwise uh, we'll simply uh, put that particular element okay now since we are storing in this array list we are simply storing the back answers from the right side like first of all we are storing let's say x y z like this right in the array list we are storing like this but we are iterating from the back so actually the answer should look like this the answer should look like z y and x right in the reverse order because we are storing we, inside the array list we are storing the answer from the starting but we uh, basically we are iterating from the back so the answer should actually reversed in the end in uh, in this particular approach so we are simply using collections dot reverse to reverse the answer and then we are returning the final list so this is how we can do this problem in C++ and Java. I think similar functions will be available in other languages as well. So if you understood this particular problem, make sure to hit the like button, comment down understood in the chat as well, and make sure to subscribe the channel as well. Thank you for watching this video.